Howdy. Once you've actually solved for all of your vortex strengths, then you can actually start to look at the typical parameters of interest. So we're saying that for our panel, we have already found the various gamma values of each panel. So once we have all the vortex strengths, then we can actually start to look at the velocities at each of these points and for instance the stream function and then also the lift and moment. So to start off, let's look at the CP, the coefficient of pressure over the airfoil surface. So the trick here is that this vortex panel acts as a line singularity that causes a jump in the velocity. It means that in order to find the coefficient of pressure on this surface, uh, we need to find the velocity immediately above and immediately below the surface. So if you're looking at this in panel coordinates, you want to set your y value equal to some positive epsilon to find the top. And this is some small number like 10 to the negative sixth or 10 to the even smaller than that. Um, and then for the bottom surface, this is simply going to be some negative epsilon. So we'll set this equal to negative 10 to the sixth. And whenever you're actually calculating CP, Remember that the, the formula for that is simply 1 minus the velocity over the infinity squared. And this is just true at every point. So you can sample a whole bunch of points above and below the surface and then create a plot of the CP in that manner. Next, we're usually interested in the lift per unit span. And this is going to be rho times u infinity times the integral from zero to c of our gamma of psi d psi. So this is just straight from thin airfoil theory. Now, using the vortex panel method, what we get to do is we get to split this integral up over each of the panels. So this is going to be equal to rho times u infinity. And then we sum over each of our panels. So this is from i is equal to 1 to n. And we will integrate from 0 to L of i. And we'll integrate gamma of x bar dx bar. Where x bar, if you remember, is our distance along our panel in the panel coordinates. So these integrals are exactly the same, just we've split them up uh, so that we're integrating over each individual panel. And we'll do exactly the same thing for our moment. So let's go and just take the moment about the leading edge. And this will be equal to rho times u infinity times the integral from 0 to c of psi times gamma of psi d psi. And once again, we're going to split this up so that it'll be rho times u infinity. And then we'll sum i is equal to 1 to n. And then we'll integrate from 0 to L sub i. And we'll have x sub i plus x bar. That'll be our psi. And then our gamma, once again, will be gamma of x bar. And once again, we'll have a dx bar. So this is how we formulate these integrals. Uh, and then we can evaluate them once we actually know what this gamma distribution is. So let's look at our constant panel. and our linearly varying panel, which I'm just going to shorten to linear panel. 
and let's look at the lift per unit span and the moment per unit span about the leading edge for the constant and linear panels. So for the constant panel, our gamma is constant. So this simplifies down into rho times u infinity, then we sum i is equal to 1 to n, and then this integral just becomes gamma sub i times r l sub i. If we have a linear panel, then this integral over l i becomes just the average, right? So um, the average is simply the sum of gamma i and gamma i plus 1 divided by 2. So if we had these two points, then we could simplify this using the trapezoid rule, which is exact for linear. And this becomes rho u infinity times the sum i is equal to 1 to n. And you have this 1 half gamma i plus gamma i plus 1 times L of i. And then for the moment, things get just a little bit more complicated. So for the constant panel, things stay pretty simple. And we end up with a gamma i times an L of i. And then for the moment, we need a moment's arm. And so for the constant panel, that moment arm is going to be x i plus 1 plus x sub i over 2. So this right here is exactly the midpoint of the panel. For the linear panel, we end up with, once again, we have the sum from i is equal to 1 to n. And then I'm going to take this l i out front and then have quite a bit to multiply by. So we're still going to have the same term from our constant panel. So this will be gamma of i x sub i plus 1 plus x sub i all that over 2. And then we're going to have an additional contribution based on the variation. So this is going to be a gamma of i plus 1 minus a gamma of i and this will be multiplied by a slightly different moment arm. So this will be x of i plus 2x of i plus 1, and all that over 6. So this location is skewed towards the, uh, the right side of our panel. And now we have the CP for our vortex panel method, along with the lift and moments about the leading edge.